In this clip, we're going to learn how to create an editable motion trail. So we have a new scene open up, which you can find in your project files. And what we're going to do is, let's go ahead and just play this animation so we can take a look at it in the viewport. So you can see it's just a very simple ball bounce animation. We just have the ball bouncing from screen left to screen right. So it's a very, very simple animation. So what we'll go ahead and do is let's go ahead and just pause the animation, jump back to frame one, and we will select the main control for this ball rig. And now what we want to do is go up here to our menu set, and we just want to make sure that we are inside the animation menu set. So go ahead and select that. And this is going to bring up the actual visualize menu. So we'll open up that drop down, and we want to choose the create editable motion trail. So let's go ahead and open up the option box. And that's going to open up the options for the motion trail. And real quickly, we'll just go to edit and reset our settings just to make sure that we're both working at the exact same settings here. So up at the top, we have the option to actually set this motion trail. So we can either set it to create the motion trail based on the frames in our time slider, or we can create the motion trail at a set number of frames. So what we'll do is we'll choose the start and end time because currently the actual time slider goes all the way to 140. However, our animation actually stops at 121. So what we'll do is choose start and end time. And we'll keep the start time set to 1, and we'll change the end time to 121. All right. And what we can go ahead and do is just move down a little bit further on some of these properties. And what we want to check is the show frame numbers. So what this means is that with this checked, it's actually going to display the frame numbers for each keyframe on the motion trail itself. Now you can see we also have a couple different options like the trail thickness as well as the key size. But what we're going to go ahead and do is just keep everything default for now and just see what happens when we hit apply. So let's hit apply and take a look as it calculates. Then we'll just move this off to the side a little bit. And you can see that this has actually created this blue line. And this blue line is indicating exactly where this ball is going to be. So you can see the exact path that this ball is taking. So you can see how helpful this can be if you want to go in there and track your arcs because you can see exactly how this ball is moving through 3D space. And you can also see the frame numbers displayed at each of the keyframes. So frame one at the top, frame 10, frame 18, and so on. And then those white boxes indicate the actual keyframes themselves. Now what we can do is actually just undo this a couple times to get rid of that motion trail. And we'll bring over these options again. And let's actually go ahead and change the trail thickness size to two and the key size to two as well to see the change that that gives us on the motion trail. And we'll go ahead and hit apply. And now you can see the thickness has been increased for this motion trail. So it just makes it a little bit easier to actually see the motion trail. Now one really, really cool feature that you can use with this motion trail is the ability to actually edit your animation in real time and see your motion trail update. So what we'll do is make sure that we still have the main control for the ball selected, and we'll press W on our keyboard to go to the Move tool, or you can just select it right over here, and then we'll go to a keyframe. Let's go ahead and go to the keyframe on frame 18, and we're simply just going to move the ball down. And as we do that, you can take a look that this arc has automatically been updated. So that gives you the ability to basically update your arcs and track your arcs in real time. So if you feel like the arc is not as smooth as it could be, then using this motion trail, you can update it and then see the effect that it's actually going to have on your animation. And you can see by adjusting this, you get a really clear look at the overall path for your animation. And then we can play it through here and see the change that that has affected our animation. And if we wanted to, we could even go to frame something like 40 and bring the ball to the left, and then you'll see the motion trail update as well. So you can see by doing this, we're able to continually animate our ball here and then just have the motion trail update automatically in real time. So it's really, really helpful. So now that we looked at the editable motion trail feature, in the next clip, we're going to take a look at the ghost feature.